In this video, I want to show you a new way to work with states inside JavaScript. And actually, this is not fully true. The thing that I want to talk about is called temporal, and it is not there yet. It is in the third stage of proposal. As you can see here, we have a new thing inside JavaScript to work with states, and it is called temporal. And this is the official GitHub page with the proposal temporal. And as you can see here now, it is in stage 3. But I think we will get it in production really soon, because this is copy-paste of all popular libraries, and this is nothing new. Let's have a look. So working with native dates inside JavaScript is a huge pain. This is why almost all people are using two most popular libraries for this. First of all, we have a looks on library. As you can see here, we can write something like datetime.now, we can use here time zones, we can write for example minus one week, end of day, and convert it to either string. This is extremely powerful, completely immutable. This is why I highly recommend you to use this library if you are working with dates. And this is my preferred choice. If you don't like Luxon, we have exactly the same alternative, which is called Data Finesse. And it is another popular library where we are getting nice API to work with dates inside JavaScript. It also supports time zones, so everything is fine. What is the problem? The problem is that this is the core functionality of JavaScript, and all people need working with dates. And we don't have it. And native implementation of working with states is really bad. This is why we will get a temporal API, and I am almost sure that it will be approved. Why is that? Because actually, if you will look on, for example, looks on library and on temporal, it is like 99% the same. Which actually means we didn't reinvent the wheel, we just took a super popular library and we wrote exactly the same. And you must understand now that this functionality is not yet available in any browsers. If you want to use it in your project, you can either install a polyfill, here we have JS temporal slash polyfill, you can simply install it as an npm package and then import in your project, simply import temporal from and here is our polyfill. But if you just want to test it in the console, you can simply jump to the page with temporal and test everything here. This is why here I open the console, and as you can see I can write temporal here, and I am getting the class with all available things. So actually there is a lot of stuff to work with in temporal. We have here working with dates, conversion from ISO to ISO, generating objects, working with time zones, whatever possible. This is why here I want to show you just several examples that I am using almost every single day when I am working with dates. And these examples will cover 99% of cases that you will need every single day. So first of all, let's look how we can get a date now. This is the most popular functionality that we need for sure. So we can write here temporal dot, and here we're writing now. And as you can see inside temporal, we have different things. And this is exactly what you have, for example, in the Luxon. And if we are talking about working with durations, then for sure we will use namespace duration. If we are talking about plain dates, then we will use plain date. This is why here we can write temporal.now and here.instant, and this is a function. And as you can see here, we are getting a special instant, which is an object of temporal, which actually means it is not some string, this is an instance of our instant class. But actually this format is not suitable for us to work in our applications. This is why here we can just write to string, and we are getting a nice string that we can use directly. And this is just an ISO string, you can see here at the end, this is Z, this is why it means it is in a UTC format. So once again inside temporal, you can call to string on almost everything, and you will simply get a stringified representation of whatever you have. The next case that you will for sure have is converting our ISO UTC string to temporal object. Why do you need that? Typically we store inside backend all our dates in UTC format. This is why we want to convert it in our local time of the user inside browser. And for this we can write temporal dot, and here we are using instant dot from, and here inside we can pass just UTC string. I'm hitting here enter and we're getting again our date with an instant class, which actually means we can directly here apply different methods afterwards if we need to. And this is really convenient. 
Another case will be to generate a date if you don't have a UTC date. In this case we can use another namespace, we can write here temporal dot and here zoned date time. And actually if we are talking about date times, almost always we must provide a zone inside, so we know in which zone the user is situated. And here we have a really nice method which is called from. And inside we can provide just an object with different fields, for example a year, we can write here 2022, then we have here month 1, and we have here day 1. And we're hitting here enter and we're getting an error, required property time zone missing, which actually means we must provide here a time zone. For example here I can say time zone Euro Berlin. I'm hitting here enter and we're getting here temporal zoned daytime, which actually means this is our date inside temporal, but with time zone inside. And we can call here afterwards to string and check how this state will look like as a string. And here we have a really important part. Here we have z because this doesn't have time zone, but here we have plus one because actually this is a time zone Euro Berlin. And again, there is nothing new. If we will jump an API of Luxon, here you also have a namespaces like daytime, duration, interval. And we can write here from, and this is exactly the same method like we see here. So here inside we are providing an object. So here inside Luxon we have for example from object. And as you can see here in the documentation, it is exactly the same. So here we are providing daytime from object and we are throwing inside year, month and day. And then we are getting an object of Luxon. Exactly in the same way temporal is working. This is why it is not something new. This is just a copy paste of the popular library. Another important possibility is to read different information from our temporal date. For example, here we have our zoned date time, just like we wrote previously. And we can write, for example, day of week. And we are getting here, as you can see, six, because this is the sixth day of the week. And sometimes it is really important information for us, and in plain JavaScript it is difficult to get all these numbers. And exactly like day of week, we can write for example days in month. And in this case we are getting 31, so we know that in this first month we have 31 day. And for example, if you need to check how many days you have in year, then you are just writing days in year, and you get this information. Another important stuff for me is to use plus and minus to our dates, which actually means we have some date and we want to calculate a new date, maybe in one week. In this case here we have our date, and after this we can just write dot add, and here we are providing an object, and this is completely the same syntax like inside Luxon. So here we have an object and we can write days 3. In this case we are adding here 3 days, so here we had 1st of January and now here we have 4th of January. And in the same way you can add not only days but also month and here now we have the 4th month of our year. And obviously we can not only add, but we can also subtract. This is why here I can write subtract, I'm hitting enter, and here I'm getting 10th month of 2021. And the last feature that I want to show you is the difference. Actually sometimes we must calculate a range between two dates, for example in days, month or years. In this case here I want to create date 1 and we are starting inside first day of the year. After this I want to create day 2 and here I want to call add and inside I want to provide month 3. In this case we have now two dates, date 1 and day 2. Now I want to compare them. Now we can check the difference, we can write here day 2, since and inside we want to provide date 1. As you can see now we are not getting a date back, we are getting a duration. This is why we are getting temporal duration and here is our duration. And actually it doesn't make a lot of sense for us and even if we are writing to string, we simply get this string. It is not clear what is inside. What we typically want to do, we want to get our duration, for example in hours or days. Let's say that we want to get it in days. In this case we must provide a second argument, this is an object, and we can write here largest unit, and here we will write day. After this we can call dot days. In this case we are getting the difference between two dates in days. And as you can see in our case it is 90. If we will provide here largest unit, for example hours, and we will write here hours, we will get a difference in hours. 
As you can see, Temporal API is really an awesome solution to work with states, but it is not yet production ready. This is why if you need something today to work with states inside production, then I highly recommend you to check my video about Luxon and I will link it here on the top.